Welcome to Asian Horizon. Today I will reflect on some of Saudi Arabia's geoeconomic challenges going forward and its implications. So first of all, Saudi Arabia does not have access to any ocean directly. It does have access to the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf. However, to pass from the Red Sea and into the Gulf of Aden and Indian Ocean, it has to pass via Yemen. And Saudi Arabia is in a war with Yemen against the Houthis. So that remains a challenge. In addition, to pass from the Persian Gulf into the Gulf of Oman and into the Indian Ocean, it has to pass the Strait of Hormuz, which is controlled by Iran. Therefore, Saudi Arabia does not have ocean access, which remains a, a challenge for its international trade strategy and really supply strategy going forward into the future. However, for Saudi Arabia, it could have developed an international infrastructure strategy, you know, either by building a bridge via the Tehran Island to the Sinai Peninsula and into Egypt and into North Africa. That hasn't happened yet. In addition, it could have developed some strategy, you know, through Jordan. But then, you know, Jordan borders both Syria and Israel. And there are also geopolitical challenges in that regard. So therefore, with the situation in Syria, which remains you know, in many ways, just kind of, you know, in limbo because it hasn't really developed any you know, international strategy in terms of how Syria can be developed, how the rebuilding of Syria can take place because you know, sanctions remain and there, there are still fighting in some areas in Syria. Therefore, you know, it still remains a challenge also for Saudi Arabia. How can Saudi Arabia really develop a long term international infrastructure strategy that can really build you know, its international trade opportunities and develop you know, supply corridors. That is a major challenge for Riyadh and the government in Saudi Arabia needs to reflect on that. And I think I'm sure that you know, both King Salman, Mohammed bin Salman and you know, the, the elite and the larger community in Saudi Arabia, that, that's a key challenge for them. And the question is you know, if they will be able to kind of wind down the war in Yemen and then potentially be a part of the rebuilding in Yemen but that doesn't seem very likely, not in the short term, not in the medium term. In addition, while Oman has access to the Gulf of Oman and the Indian Ocean, however, there hasn't been any clear international infrastructure strategy that we have seen emerge with Saudi Arabia linking up and developing, you know, a, a, say a corridor into Oman. Now, there are trade links, but again, for Saudi Arabia to reach its vision 2030, which is only about eight years away, you know, that is also maybe even too short for Saudi Arabia to really recalibrate its economy and change from oil and gas dependency into becoming more green and develop, a, you know, a wider, you know, sectoral approach to develop new industries. The question remains, how will Saudi Arabia do that? Maybe they should maybe change from Vision 2030 to Vision 2050. Maybe that is more realistic to have maybe a 30 year strategy. Because also, if Saudi Arabia is to develop you know, an international infrastructure strategy, potentially build a bridge via the Tehran Island into the Sinai Peninsula and you know, be a part of developing larger infrastructure corridors across Sinai and maybe across North Africa, for that to happen, it's going to take you know, probably 10 to 20, maybe 30 years. In addition, for you know, the Jordanian economy to change and grow and for Iraq to truly stabilize and maybe you know, also become a major economic growth factor, it's going to take potentially decades. Therefore, Saudi Arabia, because of its location and because of the nature of you know, its relations with its neighboring countries, it's in a war with Yemen and it doesn't have ocean access and Iraq has its challenges, Jordan has its challenges. It hasn't you know, yet built any bridge to Egypt. Uh, while Egypt is emerging and growing, Egypt is building a new capital city. Egypt has developed a Suez you know, canal economic zone. And Suez, you know, Egypt is also building a high-speed railway from El Alamein near the Mediterranean Ocean to the Red Sea. So you know, in many ways, we can say that you know, really Egypt is really growing in, you know, infrastructure-wise and you know, it's building. Uh, but Saudi Arabia kind of lags behind. Question remains, what can Saudi Arabia do? Well, they should wind down the war in Yemen as quickly as possible. The war in Yemen should just end because it's not creating any benefits for Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is not going to be able to you know, beat or, or win the war in Yemen. The Houthis are too strong, they are resilient, and therefore it's not possible for Saudi Arabia to win that war. They should stop the war as quickly as possible. They should recalibrate their international strategy 
develop infrastructure strategies either through Jordan, Iraq, Egypt, or after they can stop the war in Yemen, maybe be a part of rebuilding Yemen in some capacity, but it remains to be seen how that can take place. But also the question is how the negotiations between Saudi Arabia and Iran in Iraq will continue, potentially if Saudi Arabia and Iran are able to change their relationship and build a more you know, positive future for their bilateral relationship, that would be very important for the wider region and not only for Saudi Arabia and Iran. So therefore, these are some of the geoeconomic challenges that Saudi Arabia and Riyadh need to deal with and that should you know, take place very quickly because the you know, Vision 2030 is approaching very fast. It's only eight years away. So thank you so much for joining and I look forward to see you again. Thank you.